Hi, these are the Owl's Awesome Science Books by me, Jane Clark, illustrated by James Brown. And Al is Al Boffin and he loves science and he and his twin sister Lottie, who also loves science but also nature, live with their mum and their dog Einstein and Al's always getting into trouble with the neighbours for doing experiments because he's trying to make a time machine and in the various books which can be read in any order he's trying to work out things um, to do with his time machine and do experiments but the experiments he does are experiments that you can do so you might like to have a go we're going to have a look today at blast off experiments and it's Alan Lottie's birthday party and they are very busy preparing and then there's the party with the neighbours next door Mr and Mrs Good who um, really like things quite neat and tidy. So here are some things um, that happen. It starts off when they are blowing up their balloons and um, the balloons I've got the publishers provided are the um, eco balloons that will break down but when you finish with a balloon um, if you could just snip the ring of it before you put it in recycling then that will stop and any it getting around the neck of any little creatures just in case it ends up in a landfill so they are at the beginning of the the book doing an experiment how's experiment had begun how many puffs would it take to fill a balloon he took a deep breath and blew into a red one with all his might <laughs> His best friend Mia and his dog Einstein watched curiously as Al's cheeks puffed up and his freckly fence went purple with the effort. The balloon just wouldn't inflate. Al gasps. So they work out that they have to stretch the balloon before they blow and then they blow. And of course, somebody starts making squeaky noises. <coughs> now, Lottie, who is very good at knowing about natural things, says, actually, this is just like that muscle in your bottom. So when you make a fart, the noise your fart makes depends on how tight the muscle is at the time, so you might like to practice farty noises like they do. Of course, they also let them go. So we put the energy into the rubber with our breath and the, inside the balloon there is air and when we let it go, suddenly it goes which was unfortunately off camera, but I'm sure you can work out that I didn't know where that was going. And it would not be a really useful way to send anything, the rush of air to send anything off, because you wouldn't know what direction it would go. If you wanted a balloon to go in one direction, you have to rig up a string, which you can do, and the book will show you how, from a door handle to a chair, for example, and you have to tape the blown up but not tied balloon onto that string to make it go in one direction. <laughs> Rubber also has the quality that if you can align all the molecules in one direction, you can make it so full of static electricity that your hair is going to go off. It's the same sort of things when you take a jumper off and things crackle. Can you see my hair just there is sticking to the blue? So you can do an experiment with that, um, with or without the blue. <laughs> Tied up. Now, they do get a bit fed up just blowing balloons, so they work out that there's another way that they can inflate them. And for this, you will need some bicarbonate of soda, um, or baking powder, so something your mum um, uses for cakes or scones and Al is doing this actually over the cake mix that his mum is making so he ladles a whole lot into 
a balloon. So in here, there's about um, a tablespoon of, I was not, not very precise. It does make the point in the book that you could be a lot more precise with your sights, but it's got about a teaspoon in here. Um, if you're gonna do this with a large quantity, do it in the sink or outside. I know I've got enough here that I'm not totally going to wreck my house. Um, because what we're going to do is we're going to make a, um, we're going to put it with vinegar and we're going to cause a chemical reaction. So the vinegar is just malt vinegar from the chip shop. I actually put some in an, another bottle, which was a salad dressing bottle. Salad dressing would work, but it's got oil in as well. So um, it just won't be as good. So just use chip shop vinegar. Or if your um, grown up has got some posh white vinegar, you can, of course, use that. Though they might not be so delighted because you're not going to be using it again. So I have um, a little box here so that I don't totally wreck my house. What you want to do is put the top of the balloon over the bottle quite snugly. And then you're going to lift it up and it's going to go into the vinegar all at once. So let's do that. There it goes. And the chemical reaction you can see has already started to blow up the balloon. As I say, I haven't put so much in there that I'm going to wreck my house, but you can, you can do this outside with more and um, make the balloon blow up even more. But when you take it off, which I am not going to do, in here you will get a lot of very smelly gloop and it will your house will smell like a um a fish and chip shop an english fish and chip shop should you spill it which of course out does needless to say well let's put that out the way now einstein the dog does have a flea in this one and Lottie points out that free, flea's legs are extraordinary. They're a bit like catapults. A flea can jump up into the air and it can jump 120 times its own height. So just imagine if that was you and you could jump that high. If you try at home, you can try, and I don't think you can see my knees, but if you jump really with everything stiff like that, you won't get anywhere. But if you bend your knees, of course you can jump higher. So you can spring higher. Now, Al wants to experiment, of course, with that. And what he decides to do is to make a catapult. So here is a non-threatening, your grown up will be glad to know, catapult that you can make from a kitchen towel, um, roll it just as long as it's got a bit of, of uh, paper let off on it it will be fine it will be usable afterwards your grown-up will be glad to know you need a big spoon wooden spoon most people have a wooden spoon and you will need three rubber bands so and again if you um, do dispose of these do snip them so what you do they can be of any color so you choose. You crisscross them over your kitchen bowl. So you will get, or you would if you were better than me, you'd get probably two X's. But anyway, as long as you've got one X, so they've gone diagonal, then you slip through your wooden spoon like that. And you take the third, you put it around the bowl of the spoon and you have to pull quite hard and maybe wiggle it up because you're going over the edge. So the third one's gone round like that. And then how you use it is you put it down with the end of the spoon on the table. You put whatever you're pinging, they use marshmallows because it is a party, in the bowl. You pull it down and then when you let it go, oh, it will go somewhere. So you could have a bit of a competition with your grown-up or with a brother or a sister to see how far you can twang things with the catapult. But of course it's not going to be really much use for um, getting your... Uh, 
time machine to travel fast through time and space because boy would you need a big catapult anyway we must move on because Al I don't want this to spend, <laughs> spend forever because I know people don't want to watch any more than 10 minutes and I think I may have gone over that but anyway in his book there are loads and loads of experiments and um, they're all they're all written up as a silly story and the experiments are shown in this book so that you can do them at home there's the bottle rocket of course which is a classic but which I am not going to do in the living room and there is the fizzy cola experiment and for this you need and I don't have any in the house and I wasn't going to do it in this room anyway you will need those shiny mints so Mentos or whatever, there's all sorts of different makes or supermarket owned brands, but they're shiny ones. And you need, my friends and I did this outside, you need a bottle of cola, diet, whatever, any sort of cola. And you need to dump in the mints all at once. So actually the best way is just to make a cone out of some paper so that they're all going at once and then you will find a very gratifying whoosh that goes off now Al does decide to do this inside and at the party and at this point Mr and Mrs Good are over in their best clothes so it's all gone up the cola is sprayed all over the balloons it's drifting down so the twin mrs boffin that's the twins mum was gazing in open mouth consternation as the co at the cola stains on mrs good's new outfit the sofa and the carpet a balloon landed in front of einstein he grabbed it with his jaws and it exploded with a bang einstein went bonkers he raced madly round and round the table chasing and snapping at balloons woof 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 Philip, that's um, their friend, was taking pictures. Click, click, click. Come on, dear, Mrs. Good urged his wife, but she wasn't paying attention. She stepped right into Einstein's orbit and the overexcited dog collided with her with a whomp. Mrs. Good and Einstein ended up on the carpet in a damp, dishevelled heap. Mrs. Good struggled to sit up. Al rushed to help, but before he could grab the dog's collar, Einstein sprang to his feet wagged his tail enthusiastic in Mrs. Good's face and his bottom gave a sudden bop right next to her nose. She clutched at her throat and turned a delicate shade of green. Phew, that was a stinky one, Al gag. Lottie, Mia and Philip all held their noses and nodded. Oh, and um, yes, there's a disgusting fact. Mrs. Good sat on the floor, gasping like a fish out of water. Einstein peered worriedly into her face. He gave her nose a friendly, syrupy lick. The twins watched in horrified fascination as a tiny brown insect leapt off Einstein and landed in Mrs. Good's hair. A flea! Mrs. Good howled. She leapt to her feet and bounced around the living room, tearing at her newly done hair. Get it off me! Get it off me! Now! Oh dear, scene of chaos. Mia's eyed Sean. I've calculated something, she said. This is the exact moment to blast off in a time machine. Maybe this is the moment you should stop your experimenting, Al, Philip suggested. But I'm a scientist and scientists never give up, Al said. Everyone has times when they need a time machine. He looked around at the remains of the birthday tea and the cross expressions on the face of Mr. Mum and Mr. and Mrs. Good, especially me. So that was another lot of trouble. Don't get into too much trouble doing those experiments. <laughs>